Have you ever thought about the difference between hearing and listening? What happens when we hear someone versus when we listen to someone? I'll also put this another way. What happens when we look at words as opposed to reading words? Listen with me for a little while, and we'll consider hearing versus listening, looking versus reading, and maybe even how fear and anxiety make a mess out of these things. As you can see on the video player, this one's a bit on the long side, so I want to invite you to carve out enough time in your day to watch it all the way through. With that, I want to start by trying a little experiment with you. It's simple and will involve pausing this video a couple of times while you take notes and reflect. Here's the first thing I'd like for you to do. In whatever way you'd like to take notes, create a space for yourself to do that. Once you have that writing space ready, I'd like for you to consider your current level of focus. And I'd like for you to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 6, where a lower number means that you're feeling pretty distracted, and a higher number means that you're feeling focused. Once you've settled on a number, pause this video and write a sentence or two about why you've assessed yourself this way. We're going to do the same thing again. But this time, instead of considering your focus, I'd like you to consider your current level of worry. Rating yourself on the same scale of 1 to 6, where a lower number means that you're feeling pretty worried about something, anything, or everything. And a higher number means that you're pretty much at peace. Go ahead and pause this video again while you consider your number and write a sentence or two about why you've assessed yourself this way. Okay, so just hold on to that for now. Meanwhile, I'd like to share a little reflection and what I think will be a helpful practice with you. As I was sitting to write the script for this video, I paused for a moment to notice what was going on around me. Here are just a few of the things that I noticed. One side of a conversation going on in another room. The teacher side of a Zoom classroom. One of my dogs stretching and groaning at my feet. The air conditioner blowing cool air on my head. A few vines from my Golden Pothos houseplant a paper receipt, and their shadows dancing in that same air-conditioned air. Red and green lights from my audio mixing console. A red light on my phone. A notification pop-up from my Google Calendar, reminding me that I have a meeting starting in 10 minutes. A pop-up notification that I've received a new email from a student. My dog's barking because the doorbell rang. A notification pop-up from an automated text message informing me that my package from Amazon had been delivered, hence the doorbell. Ever worried of packages being stolen from my porch, I got up to retrieve it. After sitting back down, I heard kids moving up and down the hallway, opening and closing doors unnecessarily loudly from my point of view. My phone vibrating because of another text message from someone else wanting to confirm that I'd received an email. <sighs> These visual and aural distractions all happened over the span of about 10 minutes. And I know I'm not alone in experiences like this. Far from it. Many of us are bombarded by a constant flow of information and interruptions. Small things and big things that vie for our attention. I think I was only able to name many of those distractors because I forced myself to pay attention to them. But whether or not I paid attention, those distractors were still there. Even if I wasn't paying attention on purpose, some of those distractors may still have come to my conscious awareness. 
those big distractions. But I imagine that many of them might have been more subconscious or small distractions, but distractions nonetheless. So now let me ask you this. Have you ever started to read something, then at some point stopped reading only to realize that you have no idea what you just read? And I'm not talking about comprehension. I'm talking about that moment when you realize that your eyes were looking at words, but you realized that you weren't reading them. I love asking this question in a classroom because invariably every single person, students, teachers, supervisors who are observing me, everyone raises their hand with a smile to affirm this experience. Most of us experience this, am I right? So okay, this happens to most if not all of us, but why does it happen? I'm pretty sure that all those kinds of distractions that I listed off a minute ago have something to do with it. It's hard to listen, to read, and to write in environments that are full of distractions. In fact, now is a good time as any to put away doing for a moment and just be. Go ahead and pause this video for about 20 seconds and don't do anything. Just be. I wonder during that time, how many things tried to call your attention away from just being. There may have been some external things like what I listed before, but I'll bet there were also some internal things. Did you hear your mind trying to talk to you? That running monologue that echoes around inside, making observations, considering what you might want to eat or drink soon, wondering if you've forgotten to do something? Judging whether or not watching this video is a good use of time? You know that voice, right? That voice is part of you. All of our minds have a monologue. But I think oftentimes that monologue gets in the way of listening and reading closely. It's a subtle distraction that we may not even notice, but it is a distraction nonetheless pulling our attention away, even from things that we want to consider. That monologue can even prompt feelings of worry. Did I forget to... Will I have enough time to... What'll happen if... All of those thoughts that lead to a kind of cognitive and emotional spin cycle. Have you ever read something and then realized you missed most of what you just read? Yeah. It's because our minds are multitasking worry machines. <laughs> and this creates a few challenges. So on the one hand, we are both externally and internally distractible creatures. And on the other hand, listening and reading deeply are acts that by definition, require our focus, particularly for listening empathetically and compassionately, and for reading closely and critically, all of which are habits of mind and behavior required for good academic labor that often exists through complex ideas, language, and sentence structures, like what I just said. So one of the keys is to find a way to help limit the external distractions and perhaps even temporarily silence that inner monologue so that we can listen, read, and write well. The trick, my friends, is the core of our being. It's breathing. 
I mean a special kind of breathing, though. I'm talking about something called mindful breathing. It's the kind of breathing where you take breathing off of autopilot and instead breathe on purpose. Bringing awareness and purpose to our breath, we breathe in and pay attention to what it feels like to breathe in, noticing how cool the air is as it enters our nose and how warm it is when it leaves our mouth. To limit those external distractions, we might find solitude in our own room and close our eyes while we breathe so that we can draw in deep, purposeful breaths. We might sit or stand tall with what we know is good posture, giving our bellies plenty of room to drop down out of the way so that our lungs can expand fully. I'd like to invite you to try to breathe mindfully on your own for around three to five minutes or so. Pause this video Find a quiet space, get into a position of intention, and breathe on purpose, deeply in through your nose and slowly out through your mouth. Try not to think about anything besides your breathing. But if some thoughts happen to come into your mind, it's okay. Just notice that that's happening and try to non-judgmentally let those thoughts go for now. Just be there in the present moment, breathing. Welcome back. We're almost done, but before we finish, I'd like to invite you to go back to your focus and worry self-assessment and do the same thing that you did before. Rate yourself on that six point scale for focus and then again for worry. Did anything change? Do you think that this practice might help us listen, read and write with more empathy? compassion or focus? My students are going to let me know as a part of our coursework. But if you're not a current student of mine, feel free to let me know with a comment below. For my part, I've shared this practice with hundreds of students. So I can say from evidence based on their reflections that mindful breathing is definitely a, ha uh, a helpful practice when done before and during listening, reading and writing. There's thousands of years worth of spiritual tradition that we refer to as meditation and some very interesting modern science that offers some context as to how or why this works. And if you're curious, I've left some uh, resources down below. With that, I want to invite you to just take a few minutes to breathe mindfully before you do any deep listening, reading or writing. And I'll bet that you end up forming a new experience and a new relationship with words and the people who use them, including yourself. Bye until next time.